Welcome to Gospel Preaching, a presentation of Gospel Time Ministries, Incorporated. I'm Dave Rigg, coming your way from my home about six miles north of Albion, Illinois. Scripture for today's message comes from the book of Jeremiah, reading from chapter 18, the first six verses. As always, the New King James translation of the original Hebrew text. Jeremiah chapter 18, starting at verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Would you pause just a moment with me for a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask for your blessing now, Lord, on the reading of your holy word. And I pray, Lord, for your guidance through the Holy Spirit within me, that I might deliver this message today as you would want it to be spoken. And Lord, that you will continue to send these messages out, directing them to the people that you know need to get them. This I pray in Jesus' name, and amen. Well, if you enjoy watching the National Football League games, you probably know that the divisional playoffs are going on this weekend. The Super Bowl game, though, will not be played until February 11th. Today, though, I want to begin by telling you a true story, and as you might have guessed, it's a football story. Okay, now this is a true story. This goes back to the year 1929. Now, that was long before most of us were, uh, probably all of us, were even born. But 1929 is the year, and it was New Year's Day, and it was the Rose Bowl football game in Pasadena. The University of California Golden Bears were playing the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Early in the game, Georgia Tech fumbled the football. A University of California player named Roy Regals scooped up that fumbled football. Somehow, amidst all of the grabbing and shoving, he got confused. Roy started running with the football, but unfortunately, he was running in the wrong direction. There went up a roar from the crowd So he thought they were cheering him on, and Roy started running even faster. He had run 69 yards, finally when a teammate caught and tackled him just before he crossed the opponent's goal line. You see, he would have scored a touchdown for the opponents. Well, that strange mistake happened during the first half of that Rose Bowl football game. Everyone was asking as halftime arrived and the players went off to their dressing rooms, everyone was asking, I wonder what Coach Nibs Price is going to say and do to Roy Regals in the second half of this football game. Well, I'll tell you more of that story a little bit later on. Now, our scripture today is, as you know, from the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament. Now, in case you don't know anything about Jeremiah, Jeremiah was the prophet who God sent to minister to the southern kingdom of Judah, the Israelites, okay? The people of Judah had sinned against God by worshiping false idols, and he had pronounced judgment upon them for doing this. The Babylonians were going to invade their land, cause great destruction, and take many of them off as prisoners to Babylon. Well, as you might imagine, the people were downhearted 
at what was about to happen to them. And in the midst of all this gloom and despair, God spoke to this prophet Jeremiah and reminded him of three great truths. And here's truth number one. God, are you ready for this now? This is important, folks. God has a plan for every single life. God has a plan for your life, for my life, and everyone who is ever born into this world. Repeating verse 6 in our text today, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Now, maybe you have seen someone using a potter's wheel, making something out of clay, perhaps into some potter, uh, pottery, maybe a, a, a vase or a jar or some other thing. Maybe you've seen that. If you remember the movie, was it Ghost? Was that the name of the movie? Um, where it shows this couple and they are uh, forming clay into something with their hands as the wheel goes around. Okay, so you know what we're talking about here. The potter would place a moist, flexible lump of clay on this potter's wheel, and with his feet, he would turn the wheel so it was going round and round with this lump of clay in the middle. Now, as he turned the wheel, the potter, with his hands, would shape the clay with his sensitive, artistic fingers into the thing, this mold of clay, whatever he wanted to make with it, okay? Now, before he actually got started, though, he would carefully study that lump of clay. He would form a mental picture in his mind what he wanted to make from this glob of clay. He had an idea of the shape that it would have, how height or how tall it would be, the thickness of the walls, and even the way that it used to be and what he wanted it to be made into. After finalizing his plan, that's when he would start the wheel to turning and begin to mold this glob of moist, flexible clay. Now, when God said, can I not do with you as this potter, what was he saying to Jeremiah? Clearly it's this. He was saying, I'm not through with this nation of Judah. He was trying to say through this old prophet, Jeremiah, they do have a future. Yeah, they're going to be carried away into captivity into Babylon. They're going to see their temple in Jerusalem destroyed. And it's going to look bad for them. But there is still a future for the nation of Judah. I have a plan, God was saying, for their future. Now, friends, <laughs> this is the hallelujah for this whole story. If God had a plan for the nation of Judah... He has a plan for every individual ever born into this world. I truly believe that. In fact, I believe the scripture bears that truth out. Now, if he had a plan for the people of that day and that time, way back there in the history, I hereby declare to you, friend, that God has a plan for every individual, even today, even you. God has a plan for every single life. He has worked out a complete plan, including salvation. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says that the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, there's a false doctrine out there that says when people are born into this world, it's already been determined by God who's going to be saved and who's going to be lost, and they have no say in it. But friends, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 flies directly into that false statement. 
and that false doctrine. Again, the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Every single person born into this world, God's plan is for every single one of them to eventually get saved. But we know from personal experience, not everybody does choose to repent and believe. Some people reject Jesus Christ, and as a result, spend eternity in the pits of hell. But friends, that is not God's desire for anybody who ended up there. God wants people to be saved. But here's the thing. We know that though that's God's plan, and God can do anything, some people still choose to reject him and end up going to hell. Why? It's very simple, friends. God gives every single person born into this world a free will. Did you get that? We are all born with a free will. We're not puppets on a string. We're not actors on a stage simply re repeating the words on a play script. We all have free will. God wants people to be saved but he creates us with free will, the ability to make our own choices. God will not force his grace upon anyone. God's plan is for every person's life to include sanctification after they're saved. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible says, now listen to this, friends, for this is the will of God for you, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. You see, God's plan for every person is to live a morally clean lifestyle. God's plan is for every person to include his will for him or her, and God's plan varies from one plan to the next. God's plan for you is not the same as God's plan for your spouse or your children or your next door neighbor. Every single person born into this world, God has a plan for him, but it's not universally the same for everyone. He doesn't intend for everyone to follow the same line of work. Maybe you are someone who works in a factory. That's not God's plan for everybody to end up working in a factory. Some of you are farmers. God doesn't expect every person or doesn't have a plan for everybody to end up being a farmer. You see what I'm saying here, friends? God's plan is for every person born into this world, but it's not that we all do the same kind of work. He has a particular plan for each of us, also in regard to our family life. You see, God leads some people to live a single person lifestyle, never to get married. God's plan is for some people to get married and have children. God's plan is for some people to get married but not have any children. In most cases, God's plan is for people is to get married and have children, but not for everybody. God will reveal his will to us. Now here's the if, there's always the big if. God will reveal his plan to us if we will earnestly ask him what that will is. Did you get that? If we will ask him, God, what is your will for my life? Let's move on to truth number two. And this is an important part too. We can mess up God's plan for our lives. You get that? Yeah, God has a plan for us, but we can mess it up. Verse four. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. So again now, we have a free will. God has a plan for your life, but he's not going to force that plan on you. You still have a free will choices that you can make, and in making some of those choices, we mess up his plan. Jeremiah goes to the house and he sees the potter working at this or working at the spinning wheel there 
making something out of this mold of clay. And Jeremiah knew that sometimes the clay would fall apart and it would get messed up. A person, friends, can indeed through free will mar the handiwork of God. Listen to Psalm 78, verses 40 and 41. How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. This is all about the people of Israel after they were uh, set free from Pharaoh. Listen, goes on, verse 41. Yes, and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Now that clearly says that God's plan was for those Hebrew people to be set free and go to the promised land, but they still had free choices to make. And we know if you've studied the Bible, what happened to those Hebrew people as they were making their journey to the promised land, they made some stupid choices and messed up God's plan. Just as the Israelites sinned and limited God's blessings to them, friends, you and me, we can actually limit the work that God plans in our lives. Yes, friends, never mistake this truth and never forget it. We, all of us, are born with a free will to make our own choices. You see, again, God didn't want us to be just puppets on a string, so he gave us the power to choose. Now, why? Why? God creates all of us with the purpose for us to come to know his salvation and to love him. But he didn't want us to love him because we didn't have a choice. He wanted us to love him because we chose to love him. Think about those of you who are married. I know that some people over the years have been forced into a marriage by an arranged marriage, but most of us picked out someone that we fell in love with and we got married. Now, would we have wanted someone to marry us because they had no choice? No. We want all of us to get married to someone who loves us and willingly gets married because they love us. Well, it's the same thing with God and his relationship with us. So, just like husbands and wives, we can choose to trust and obey him or we can choose to rebel against God. And friends, when we choose to disobey, that's when we mess up the handiwork of God in our lives. Let's move on to truth number three. God can, here's the good hallelujah part, God can remold our lives. He can remold our lives. Back to our text here today in Jeremiah chapter uh, 8, verses 4 and 6. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Now, friends, often through our hardness of heart, we choose to resist God's efforts to shape our lives. But in this illustration here that Jeremiah gets from the Lord, the potter, though he messed up the clay, didn't just pick up all that clay and throw it away and start with a new piece of clay to start molding it. He didn't throw it away. And he didn't quit, did he? No. He very patiently and persistently kept working with that piece of clay so that he was able to remold it into something. And friends, that is exactly a great illustration of what God desires to do with your life and with my life when we have chosen through our free will to get off the track. Well, let's get back to my story of Roy Regals. How does his story end? During halftime, Roy Regals sat by himself there in the locker room over in a corner all by himself. When time came to return to the field for the second half, 
The players got up to leave the locker room and head back to the field, but not Roy Regals. He didn't budge, sitting over there in the corner. Coach Price saw that, and he walked over to Roy and he said, Roy, didn't you hear me? He told Roy it was time to get back out there on the field. Roy Regals looked up with tears in his eyes and he said, Coach, I can't do it. I've, I've ruined you and I've ruined myself and I've ruined the team. I've ruined the University of California. I could not face Coach that crowd out there to save my life. I just simply can't go out there after that terrible, disappointing thing that I did. What did Coach Price say? You probably guessed an idea. He said, Roy, get up and get back out there. The game is only half over. Well, Roy Regals looked at the coach for just a long moment, and then he did get up, and he walked determinedly back out there to that football field. Friends, Roy Regals played extremely well in the second half of that football game. He went on to be the team captain in his senior year. He earned All-American honors. He graduated from the University of California in 1931. He taught, or he taught and coached football at both the high school and college levels. He went on to serve as an officer in the Army Air Corps during World War II and then became a successful businessman. In 1991, Roy Regals was elected to the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame in spite of the fact that he almost scored a touchdown for the opposing team by running in the wrong direction. In 1998, Roy Regals was elected to the University of California Hall of Fame. Well, it's time for me to put a bow on this little message to sum it up, to see what it all means. Friends, it's pretty simple. When we go in the wrong direction in this game of life, the great coach of the universe doesn't throw us out of the game, leave us on the bench, and our future can still be bright. You may have really messed up in your life. I know as I look back over the years of my life, there were times when I did. I messed up royally, really did. But in 1988, I finally came to know what God's will was for this man's life. And I'm so thankful that God has been molding my life even more after that time into what he wanted me to be when I was actually born into this world in 1948. So friends, and just like me, maybe sometimes in your life, you have really messed up things. God's plan for you, because of your free will choices that you've made, you've messed it up. But friends, don't, as the old saying goes, throw in the towel. Don't quit. Roy Regals didn't quit. You may have messed up, but don't give up. Failure does not have to be the final point of your life. Our great Lord is the God of another chance. And he says, through the story of the potter, I'll remold your life and you'll meet my conditions and eventually become what my will has been for your life from the day you were born. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you again for the opportunity to come this week with this message you laid upon my heart. I pray, Lord, now as it goes out that you will direct it to the people who need to get this message. Direct it, Lord, to those people who right now feel like a failure, who feel like they've messed up terribly and things are going so wrong in their lives. Lord, show them through this message that the game is not over. They're still playing in the game of life and there's still time for them to submit to your will for them and let you, Lord, like the potter, begin to mold them into what you want them to be. This I pray in Jesus' name. And amen. Well, thank you for watching Gospel Preaching today. If the Lord gives me another week of life, I'll be back again next week with another message from God's Word. My prayer is that in the meantime, the Lord will continue to richly bless you.